What's up guys, hope you're doing great. This is your boy Kobe Shots and in today's video we are doing yet another conversation with yet another creative on Creative Chat. So in this episode we are going to go into the live of my fellow brother over here. I'm not going to do any bit of an introduction about him, he's going to do that himself. But as you know what we do over here, we talk about the experiences that the creatives have accumulated so far ever since they started what they're doing. So without much ado, let us leave everything to him as he introduces himself. So my brother, you're welcome to Creative Chats. Can you give us a brief introduction about yourself, your name of course, and uh, in the creative field, what exactly it is you do? Okay. So I'm Anthony Yama, but most people know me by black, and then I'm from Black Eye Photography. So I'm a photographer, and then I do a little bit of retouching as well. I retouch for other people, oh, okay. photographers and brands. Okay. And normally, like normal people too as well. So say you can shoot with your phone, I can edit. You can edit. Oh. And then photographers. All right. So your how much you've commercialized photography goes beyond just your photography yes, being edited, yes. but other people can also yes, yes, yes. send their work to you and you can do that as yes. well. Okay, that's wonderful because not so many photographers actually do that. Yeah, 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 so yeah. you are widening the spectrum of, you know, yeah, so it's not the amount really of work that you can do yeah, and how much, yeah, 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 yeah you take in. Yeah, that's wonderful. All right, so following up, I want you to give us a brief background about yourself. When you started photography, mm -hmm. how far you've come, in fact, the journey and how it has been so far, basically. Okay, I would say it has been uh, four to five years now. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. It hasn't been long, but it hasn't been short to us. Well, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so I think four or five years. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So was photography a passion or... I mean, was it in your family? Because I spoke to a, a photographer and he told me that mm -hmm. he was lucky enough to have had a photography background in terms of his father was a photographer. They had a camera at home. And so it was passed on like that, like a family heirloom. But I don't know about you. How did it start out? Was it that you were in a family that was photography oriented or no, 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 yours no, no, is a no, totally no, different story? No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. So, uh, okay. I would say it was from passion. But okay. Uh, I wasn't really into photography. I was into Ooh. something else. I was Not into, at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was wow. into uh, motion graphics and animation. Interesting. Yeah. And then graphics as well. Yeah, graphic design. Wow. Yeah, so, so how did it happen? How did you transition from doing graphic design to doing so much well? In fact, to compare your work to a couple of other people who have been doing for more than five years, I mean, personally, if I should look at them, I can really say that Looking at your work, it will be very easy to convince someone that you've been doing this for over 20 years. Trust me. Sure, sure. <laughs> but yes. So how was the transitioning like and how did you, I mean, make it so possible for yourself to develop this fast? Okay. So uh, uh, how do I put it? So uh, since I was into like uh, animation, animation, uh, uh, we kind of like, we sit in front of the PC most of the time. So uh, I downloaded a course online. Okay. When I started, yeah. So I started with courses. I usually sit in front of the PC like all the time. So yeah, initially I wasn't, as I was saying, I wasn't into this. So one time uh, I stopped. I wouldn't say I stopped, but uh, <laughs> business wasn't moving that yeah, well. So that one time I had a camera that I used to do. I used, yes, for rotoscoping at okay. that time. Yes, okay. I, I used it for rotoscoping. And then one time, I think that was when they opened the Kumasi Mall. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I went there one time and then someone asked me, Oh, boss, are you a photographer? I'm like, Yeah. <laughs> really? You yeah. just you just answered yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, yes. Okay, wait. Okay, I didn't answer no, okay. I didn't no, I, I didn't give that yeah. answer. I said no, but but he was like and she was like, uh, can you shoot me? And I'm like, Yeah. yeah. And then how much am I going to take? Mm -hmm. Like how much am I going to charge? Yeah. So at that time look, I didn't really know how much how, to charge. how the charge system just was like, yeah. Figured like I was I just contem I was contemplating on yeah. like how much say photographers charge, charge. at that time. Uh, what uh, I had in mind at that time was you see the photo people like hey. you see, when I was a kid. Oh no! Be careful. <laughs> okay, so uh, how do I? I mean, I mean, so, I mean you know, the photograph general photographers. Yes, 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 let me put it that way. Like yeah. our fathers, you see at that time. So mm -hmm, when I was a mm -hmm. kid, say <laughs> when I go to church at that time, they used to charge us five cities. Okay. Yeah, yeah for a picture. Remember. Yeah, so that that was what I had in mind. So I was like, and then I think the client was like. She didn't need any hard copy. She just wanted soft copy. The copies. soft copy, okay. So I was like, hey. Mm, then how are you going to figure that yeah, out? Yeah, so I was like, okay. 
uh, I'll take two cities. No, I think I was, I, 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 yeah, I think I said one city. And then she was like, oh, like, wow. Then she can so, take a lot. And then I think <laughs> she wasn't really, con- I think she thought I was a fraud or something. I don't know. Yeah, because. But, and yeah. then she asked if I can uh, send it to her, like, that moment. And then you see, at that time, we, I, I used to have, use this app, uh, Canon Connect. Okay. Yeah. To so connect your phone to yeah. your camera body. Yeah. Because I was using that at that time. Yeah. So I shot, I took one photo of her and then sent it to her like at that moment. And then she was like, oh, wow, she wants to take more. All right. So I started shooting. I think I shoot. I shot like 20 photos and when people saw me shooting. Shooting and, and they and wanted to wear like, oh I, want, oh, I want you to shoot me and all that. And I'm and sure I that think, probably they definitely asked you how much you're going to yeah, charge. Yeah, and, and I said. Once it's so, over. Yeah, everyone so, will just jump on it. Uh, <laughs> leaving there, I think. I got like almost 400 cities, 500 ads. So you like mean you shot people. as many as 500 people? Uh, no, 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 no. Like 500 pictures yes, of people almost, who came through. Yes, and I just sent it. That to was you. a lot. <laughs> Some complained that uh, like the pictures weren't played enough. No depth of field. Because I was using, uh, what lens was, was that? Kit lens. It was uh, an 18 to 55, I yeah, presume. Yeah, 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 mostly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Canon, you see that? Yes, yeah, 3.5 so to 5.6 yes, aperture. And, uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I was using that at that time. I didn't really know much about photography. I understand. I just I understand. We were just into how to click. Use it for something else, for rotoscopy. Yes, yeah. yes, so yes. we didn't so really just, need so much depth of field, silo depth of field, and all that. Yeah. True, true. <laughs> so okay. I just copied it for them. And then like, when I go home, I was like, wow, so like you can make Money this out much. Of the, even with just this camera? Yes. I'm like, oh. So one time, uh, I think the second time was, I think, uh, Kumasi uh, Technica, uh, what's it called? Kipole. Kipole. Kumasi Technica University. Yes, yes, KTU. Yes. So they were doing their graduation and then one guy, a friend of mine, convinced me that we should go take their graduation photo shoot. And I went. I'm like, so that time too, I think I got I think like 700 cities. But like, so uh, so what happened was when I got there, I was mm-hmm. a little bit intimidated because I yeah. saw pe- other people using like long lenses, like a yeah. long lens. And then and they had lots of people, sh- like they were shooting taking pictures. I'm like, of- wow. And then some too, when, like when most people come to me, like when they approach, they ask how much I charge and then the equipment I was using, they wasn't really convinced and they were like, they yeah. didn't shoot me. But though I got clients, but I was like, hmm. So what is making them use that guy instead of instead of you? So like, I like when I go home, I tried uh, searching online to see like I searched on that lens. I yeah. just searched. I just typed you no know, Google. I just typed uh, long photography lenses. What is <laughs> used for and all that? Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I got a little bit of info, info about and them. then I also searched on the depth of field. Interesting. Yeah. yeah Interesting. So like. I saw a lot, like yeah, I saw a lot. So, so with me, uh, back when I was I was doing uh, animation, we used to download courses online. We buy courses online. So I was like, since this can generate me money, yeah, why don't I just buy a course online and then study? So you actually went the extra mile of buying a course. Yeah. Online. Do you know that it's even difficult for some photographers nowadays, those starting out, oh, sure. to even go onto YouTube to find info for themselves. They rather want to reach out to photographers, expecting them to take them in, sit them down, for and spend like f- four hours and teach them all that they've accumulated over the years. Oh, yeah, yeah, it, it How does that yeah, work? And you see, I'm, I'm, I'm much amazed about how you started from doing rotoscoping with your camera, Mm -hmm. being um, someone that had animation background, nothing whatsoever about photography, Mm -hmm. observing and just through that, determining what you needed to get for yourself to improve. That's how the sequence goes and that's what passion is all about because I always tell photographers who are starting out that you need to find a reason why you want to get this or that or that. Okay, Okay, but one thing too is, uh, I'll chip this in. Okay. I'll say as much as there was passion, Mm -hmm. Obviously, I had I was driven by money too. As well. yeah. I was like, when yeah. I had the money, yeah, uh, it got me convinced that oh yeah, I can do more. So with the money, I got the passion. The passion. So yes. later, I shoot for free. I mean, so like later, I realized oh like I was really into it. So yeah, yeah, it kept on. It going kept on going like that. Yeah. That's really wonderful. And I can tell that right now. I mean, today you can boast of a lot of wonderful images, a oh, lot yeah. of, I mean, um, experiences over the years. True. So you, you are going to actually talk about your experiences, what mm-hmm. you've gone through, and uh, mm-hmm. the, the the big projects that you've done, if you can describe some of them to us, we're okay. going to do that. But um, to bring things 
closer to us. Um, you have people you work with, right? Yes. Definitely, when you're starting out, you might have, of course, reached out to someone who you deemed to be, of course, better than you were to learn from. Sure. Was it easy to reach out to photographers, those who are already hmm. in the space? <laughs> because it is going okay. to move on to how you took people in to teach them as well. Because I know that you also have people. Oh, yeah. Work okay. With. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, when you are starting, I don't know. Okay. I think. Hmm. Okay. So, when I was starting, I didn't really know anyone to even mm. search. I just searched online until like, I met a few photography, photographer okay. friends in Kumasi. Then they, they introduced me to other good photographers in Ghana. Okay. I approached them alright, but I'm not really no, nah, they didn't really reply my okay. my messages. I not they, at all? They, nah. Interesting. They didn't reply. I think I had a few but they were from Nigeria. Okay. Yeah, so I have like a little bit of connects from Nigeria but not really in Ghana. So like see the top top dogs, like the top top photographers in Kuma, I'm some I because I think I got to meet them, I think, from projects, yes, yeah. but not from social media. Okay. Except, say, the people are, that I'm closer to, or, yeah, yeah. But, say, the top dogs at that time, nah, they didn't not respond. They didn't respond. Honestly, like, they didn't. Not I even a single know. person. Let me see. Because, oh, wait, wait, right. wait, wait. Bob responded. Yes, oh. Bob Pixel. That, oh, oh. It's sad. It's so sad, yeah, we've yeah. lost such a legend. Oh, like, oh, hmm. that man, like, he, and then he inspired me. A lot of people really spoke about him. his good heart because I never got a chance to meet him, but looking at his work, it always inspired me that everyone is actually doing the same type of photography, but he's doing something totally yeah, different. Yeah, 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 like, he yeah, tells yeah. stories and he takes his time, even with his caption, sure, and sure. takes his time to write a story about the picture that even if you were not with him during that shoot, you can actually determine and imagine how interesting the shoot was. Yeah. And that was how beautiful his photographing his work was. Yeah. Like, he's really good. So he's the person who responded to... Oh, yeah. Yeah. I I quite remember. I texted (laughs) him once. I was like, I was finding this, like, difficulties in this. And he replied and he... Oh, he gave me, like, lots of tips and how to go by my clientele and all that. And how to... I especially, like, as I was... Uh, coming up, I didn't really know how to approach clients and all that. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm, he gave course. me that tip, how to approach clients, how to get clients and all that. And then, yeah. cause but one thing to, uh, yeah, I think that was it. But I, and then he was the only one at that time who responded. I quite remember. <laughs> yeah, most most guys. I don't know why. Yeah. I didn't, but okay, but me, can you say know. can you say that um, because you were starting out, just like you also get people reaching out to you. I'm sure that it's not everyone that you get the time. Oh, to, of so course. how about you say that uh, to play it safe? Maybe, maybe they, they didn't, didn't, they didn't notice have time. it, yes. or probably didn't notice it yes, at all. Yes, yes, yes. But yes. of course, some would definitely not, you know, respond but, because but, of a thing or two. Hmm. But I'm well to play it safe. That's how it's supposed to be because you, you hmm. don't expect to get things so easily. True. And I think through that, I, I mean, it's a challenge that you learn through because yeah. it makes yeah. you strive even more. Yeah. And sometimes at a point. You feel like okay, if no one is responding to me, why don't I as well do it on sure. my own? Sure. Because sure. I've gone through that as well. Sure. I also have my history about that. <laughs> sure, so sure, yeah, sure. It's it, it's, it's it's very general. I so mean, so yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, like starting a business, obviously, it's not. It's easy. not easy. One. Yeah, not yeah. at all. It wasn't easy for me, but for me, I think the online courses were really out, helped and then out. People reached me like after i think when i was speaking up people contacted me oh like oh black i like your pictures that's and all how that. it works let's collaborate and all that and i got to meet lots of uh people especially yes. the photographers yes and with that i got to meet say the makeup artists the vendors and all that mm-hmm. yes so mm-hmm. with that so i would say i didn't i didn't really really get much help from uh say the top photographers, the top photographers. in Ghana at that time yeah, yeah. yeah. i just studied online oh, on your own did my own thing yes yeah. yes and then went down. yes and then i'm here okay yeah you've really come far oh. and looking at your work uh, i mean it speaks for itself you're doing yeah. such wonderful and amazing work so i'm um, coming to you now becoming a big name an icon in photography <laughs> if you don't believe that trust me i'm ascribing all that all those attributes <laughs> on you because oh, looking at your so. work i mean 
taking a look at it, you've been doing this for just five years. Yeah, yes, five For years, just five yeah. years. And looking at the caliber of work you produce is interesting. It's, it's remarkable. Okay. People reaching out to you and you working with other people, collaborating with them. What can you say has been the most challenging part of trying to connect with other photographers to work with them, as well as taking people in to train them? Because you need to work with people. You do weddings. Yeah, you shoot yeah, beauty, okay. lifestyle, and all that. You definitely yeah. need hands on deck. And so you work with people. I think people to collaborate. Col with. Collaborate as well okay. as the people you take in to train. Okay. Okay, so uh, let me start with the collaboration. The collaboration, you yeah. see, in Ghana, most people, I don't know about, say when you hit them, I think they want to get, uh, since like they want to get recognized, so they always want to work with people who are there or almost there. Yeah. That is the thing here. So they don't want to in quote, was, waste their time with yeah, some, a so newbie was, or someone who doesn't know yeah, their way around it. <laughs> so it was quite a challenge at that time. So I just had to figure, I had to find people who are, I think, around my my level yeah. and then work with. So say if I... Like I get, like I get makeup artists who is not really good enough. Since I'm good in retouch and I'm learning, I just uh, work on the. Yeah. Because they're equally also you got to work with people and yes. it, they, and they find it even as a good avenue thing. to have someone reach out true, to them to true, want to work true. with them. Yeah. Yeah. So with <laughs> that, I just work with that and then yeah, bit by bit, yes, and I'm here. Okay. So working with um, interns or let me say people you train, mm -hmm. what are the things that you look at before you take someone in? <laughs> Do you have okay, some specifications? So you see, it's it's easy when you get people who are like who know a little bit about what you're doing. Do you get yeah. it? Yes. Uh, but most of the time, you just don't find it that easy. Mm. But since they are coming, I mean, I just accept anyway. As long as you want to, you want yeah, to the learn. Is there too, yes, man. I just give you the course. I give you whatever you learn. If I get the time, I just come and coach you a little. Yeah. Yes. Okay, yes, but I do teach. I do. do teach. That's wonderful. We're actually going to be working on a project, series of workshops. So be in the loop out for that. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about that briefly. <laughs> okay, but this really bombards my head. Mm -hmm. Why don't good photographers, lots of them, I should say, a good number of them, why don't you guys have YouTube channels? Is it that you don't want to teach people <laughs> or what? You haven't started out a YouTube okay. channel. Or you have one just that you don't pay attention so much to it. Okay, what I is actually, what is stopping you? <laughs> because it's something that baffles okay, my head. I actually a lot. have one. I actually have you one. You have a channel. Yes, I have one. But uh uh the challenge I faced and I'm still facing right now is time. time. I usually don't have the time. Yeah. So uh if I can get someone say to like say a videographer to record videos of me and okay. then maybe probably edit. I think that would be cool. That would be cool, yeah, at least. Yeah. You have some usually, content think, every now and then. I think the problem right now is the time. Yeah. Yes. And looking at, yeah. if you say you don't have time, then it means that you have a lot of work on your plate. Yeah, yeah, most of So having time. a lot of work equals a good number of content to be created. So if True. you have someone, just like you were saying, to mm -hmm. record um, behind the scenes of your process and everything, True. maybe a little bit of um, voiceover can also help out to, I mean, expatiate the worth of sure. the video and the quality of the content you put. So I think it's something that you should look into. Oh, I will. Mm. Because oh, YouTube, like... YouTube is a very good avenue <laughs> yeah, to yeah. showcase your work as well. Because I've got a, a good number of um, projects, a lot of clients reaching out because I post my work on YouTube and scrape a little bit of it, mm -hmm. the interesting parts of it, post them on other social media platforms so that if you are interested in it, you click on the link, it sends you straight to it. And if you are even more um, pleased with my work over mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. you go ahead to subscribe and all that. True. So that's how True. I've been going about my thing. So don't make time become a restraint. Oh, well, I'll time. try, I'll yes. try. Like yes. YouTube, <laughs> I think it's something I, I've always wanted to do. Mm -hmm. As I was saying, it's just, but I feel... I just need to figure a way out and then make it work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'll try yeah, and make it work. Yeah. And it's also going to help um, people or photographers alike to join hands because wanting to create content, there's going to be a time where you want to expand your reach. So you're going to want to collaborate with people. And that's one thing that's really pushing us away from each other because we are always concentrating on ourselves. And yeah. But when you collaborate with people, then you know that there's a lot to learn that True. is actually the knowledge that you are supposed to be learning is within someone and yeah. equally yeah. vice versa, just like that. True. So yeah, collaboration true. is going to be given birth to if a lot of photographers jump on YouTube to create content to help like that. True. Okay. So basically, now we know who you are what you do, a little bit about your background, yeah. the kind of work that you do and you connect with.
Can you tell us in brief a day, a typical day in your life as a photographer? What you do, let's say for instance, a good scenario is um, planning to shoot, let's say a model. Mm -hmm. What are the things that you go through? Let's look at studio based and on location based. I see in my process, like what it takes. What's a normal day like? I mean, in your head, maybe one, one photo shoot I've done before. Mm -hmm. How did it go? How did you organize it? Because people have had time connecting with the people they're going to work with, even the plans, the okay. pre-production, then the production itself. So okay, how is so it the process day? in general? Yes. So pick one. F um, you can start with the studio or, I mean, the other one. Okay. Yeah. So location. is it is it uh, shooting with brands or collaborating with? Anything. Okay. So let's... Something, um, a photo shoot involving a model. Let me put it that way. Okay. So first of all, let's start on location. Then we come into the studio. Okay. So uh, I first... Uh, try and get the idea that I want to convey. Okay. Uh, and try and find a model that will fit my idea the, concept. The concept, yes. yes. So once I have that, I usually do mood boards. Oh, okay. Yes, I do mood That boards. really helps a lot so yes, that they yes, get a yes. clear understanding from yes, the color to yes. the design. Yes. So when yeah. I do that, but not, I wouldn't say all the time because some you just speak, like you just have it in mind and you just describe it to the person they mm. sometimes get but when they don't that is when i like i would have to force myself and do the mood boards the mood but i do them i do them i have lots of mood boards that i've done so i do the mood boards and then uh, i send it to the makeup artist the model like see i find models i yeah. find makeup artists usually makeup artists like they're usually like occupied especially weekends so, yes yes yeah so you just need to figure <laughs> find a day, a day that and, you like, can get them try and make it work. yeah yeah, so I look for that and I try finding models that will work. Models, models too, it's kind of a hassle because like really? trying to get the perfect the model, perfect for, model that, for the job. Yeah, hmm. it's usually a hassle, but I mean, <laughs> we try and make it work. Yeah. Even if you don't get someone like, say, the kind of person you, but want, you actually to try want to work yeah. with. I mean, what you have yes, and, yes what I mean, you I mean, have. I mean, I mean, even having that challenge of not getting the right person now. It, it pushes you to even make what you think isn't best look good enough. Sure. And it's a process of, I mean, it's actually a learning curve. True. Yeah, True. I mean, every, every, every negativity has a bit of positivity attached True. to it. True. So. I mean, sometimes <laughs> you shoot and then usually don't go the way you want you it want to. It. So you just try and figure out like and find a way to make it work. And it helps you yeah. even plan and better for the next I mean, True. True. The next True. shoot. So yeah. experience. Yes, experience. experience. So I do that. I find models. We schedule a day, and then yeah, we just make it work. And make it work. Yes. Okay, that's wonderful. So, um, on the location, how do you put together? Do you pay for your locations mostly, or do you get the you make it a responsibility for the client? Okay, so if it's a client, obviously the client has, has to, to take responsibility. Yes, but let's right. say it's a collaboration. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> that is where the whole thing comes from. Okay, so uh, so when it comes to collaboration, sometimes especially the models. Yeah. So when we say collaboration, it's more or less like, hey, I have this. Could you want to shoot with me on this? We are collaborating, so it's more or less like we all uh, own ownership to that. Yeah, thing. to that project. So and then we are all collaborating. So in terms of money and all that. Yeah. But it will depend. I mean. If you want to, and then say that the the model doesn't, I mean, like you just need to find a way to make it work. Because obviously, you came up, you came up with the whole, the whole idea. Yes, but for me, I feel you doing a collaboration, and then you feel like you are assuming no, you are having ownership for, uh, to that. I feel, I mean, you. It's, some, it's best you split yes. the responsibility I mean, in terms of financing yes. the whole thing. Yes. Thank you. Yes. So uh, usually, it's kind of a challenge most of the time. Mm. I mean, and then so. Well, it tends to be like, say, if you brought, like, you, idea. I bring the idea, I have to, like... Get yeah, you have that kind of on. pressure. You feel that kind of pressure because um, in one way or the other, the others may be other man's because in the end, after all, you called us to come on so board, so we expect you to in take of, responsibility of our... See, the models, transportation <laughs> and all that, hmm. makeup artists coming, transportation and all yeah, that. Everything. Yes, but I feel it has to be, like... Something that you share... Yes. Responsibility that's shared. If yeah. only you, you buy my idea and you yeah. feel you want to be in. I feel yeah. So I think oh. communication comes here as a very integral part because if you communicate well to them, make them understand that this is something I want us all to join our hands on because in the end I'm gonna sit down, edit the work, 
you're going to have a piece of it. Definitely. You are also going to boast of whatever it is that you did for the project. Definitely. So, and then Juno you know, starts from the communication from, from there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, let me tell you this. So, let's assume you, you have a show with, say, a model or a makeup artist. Yeah. And then you foot the all the bills and all that. They, they are even the ones to even bother you, say, when, when is you, it, when is when it coming? Are, are you done? <laughs> like the pressure and all that. Oh but hey, I, I did, I, I mean, I, I pay for everything. Yeah. So, yes, no, no, you have to take your time. Yeah. Yes, but usually, like, they are the ones who, who tend to, like, put a those. lot of pressure on you. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I mean, it's understandable yeah, I mean, because I mean, we all get it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so, that's how, I mean, things happen, for instance, you know, collaborating with others and that. So, over here in this space, this, as I've said before, this is his editing space where he does his post production. Yeah. When you are planning to shoot um, in a studio, which you also have in, in this very building where you are, um, when you get your models in, do you shoot? I don't see a lot of male models on your page. Ah, uh, I don't see a lot of male models on your page. Well, I mean, it can be a pre I mean, a personal preference. Oh no, 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 no offense, no. actually. No, and I don't mean any. Okay. I mean, okay, uh, so. accusation or whatever. <laughs> oh no, I no. mean, you're a photographer. And you know what? Oh, you... but let me let me answer okay. that. Okay. So, <laughs> not that I don't want to shoot male models, but okay. usually, <laughs> usually like it doesn't I mean, feel like, right in a way. Not that it doesn't feel right, <laughs> but you see. Mm. If you want to get content out and you want it to go like far, far. and all that one, usually male models, I shooting understand. males doesn't really go far I as understand. much as females. And then aside that, most of the things that I want to shoot are like female feminine based, based kind, yes, of, kind yeah. of way. It's that understandable. Is so not that I, I've shot, I've, I've shot a, like a male model yes, or a couple quite, of them. Yes, and did you enjoy it as much oh, as you yeah. did with? I mean, as long as, like, say, I have that in mind and I want to shoot, yeah. definitely. But most of the time, like, it's, it's driven towards the female. The female. Yes. And yeah. what was the difference? How did you feel? I mean, the experience shooting a male model and a female model, what were the circumstances, the difficulties, the challenges? Uh, <laughs> How different was it? I mean, I would say... Nah. It's quite easy working with the female models, right? Because that's uh, how I would even say the males. Really? Honestly, yeah. Because you don't have to say much? Yes, and then okay. see boys, you get it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And then it doesn't yeah. take much to shoot guys, and then even posing males are not as hard as yeah, true, females. True, true. And you don't even have to, I mean, have them wear heavy makeup, even if they have to. Yeah. You get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that, that, that difference is yes. huge. And over yes, there, like, yes. yeah. okay. Now, most of the time, I shoot females. Not that I don't like males. <laughs> I understand. Hey, I understand. Wait, it was just by the way, actually. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so coming to the studio, how do you plan your day in the studio shooting a model in the studio? Uh, I think it's quite similar to the one shooting on location. Mm. Yeah. It's basically the same. Okay. Yeah. I just okay. plan. I contact them. Hey, All if right. you want to come on board, sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There's this misconception about we photographers. I'll say it's a misconception because not all of us are corporates to that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> A lot of models tend to complain that photographers mm -hmm. touch them in the wrong areas. <laughs> I consistently ask photographers when uh, I get in contact with them. What is your take on that? <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, I haven't experienced that before. But, uh, I mean, before I even touch you, I would ask <laughs> of your permission. How the word touch came in it? It's uh, not so funny. <laughs> but I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't even put it as touch. Like I would say, I, I direct. Okay. You okay. get to, uh -huh. And then I feel okay, okay, let me use this word touch. That is only <laughs> if let's say I'm applying oil. That yeah. is if you want me to. Okay. Do you okay. get it? So yeah, well, so you ask just, first. Yes, if yes, you so want me to help you with that. Yes. Yeah. Sure, why not? But I don't mm. really have that yeah that in mind. I, just, I mean yes. that intention, yes. wrong intention yes. of yes. touching. So them. I don't know. Okay, I've seen people doing that because mm. I recently saw someone oiling someone and in the way I don't know if they intentionally did because that, but is it what I'm also thinking? I wouldn't mention this, but okay. I think I've seen it. Yeah, you've seen it there. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've seen it. I don't know if like, it yes. was intentional Be or like... If they filmed and it looked like the film, the filming of that particular activity was... Um, deter I mean, sorry, it was decided and was intentional. Yes. Then I think it was on purpose. Yes, but, but if it wasn't, yeah. I, was, I feel it wasn't really professional. It wasn't professional. Even yeah. if you do that, why do you even expose and show us that that's what you do? I mean, okay, at the end of the day, it's the client. She gets yes. Because yes. I even feel even most clients, hey, sorry, most people, yeah, especially females, yeah, 
Okay, let me keep quiet. <laughs> Let's continue. I don't want to. I don't want to. Say I get it. Someone, I get it. Yeah, we um, have to try and play day. it safe. Yeah, yeah everything yeah, that we say yeah, over here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I think I think um one bad nut will definitely affect all of us. Sure. Because I mean, but I, I mean the I mean quote the good ones out there. I think we actually keep on doing the good work that we are doing and not make this affect us because. Of course, it affects all of us when people say that photographers have this kind of yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. That. yeah yeah. So um yeah, basically we've spoken about your day to day activity and normal typical day in the studio and all that. Coming to retouching, the transitioning of starting from the ground upwards, there has been definitely a lot of improvement. Yeah. Looking at my work on Instagram. Dating back to 2015, there's something that I do. I don't delete or I don't even archive my work. So that if someone has the time on their hands to check my work and see if I'm actually for real, this is my work, the person can have it for themselves. Mm-hmm. Looking at your work from the past, okay. I'm sure that you have a couple of them that if you look at them right now, oh, you yeah, yeah. have a good laugh about. Yeah, 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 definitely. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, the process of going and transforming your work and your mm-hmm. procedures... What were the tools that you incorporated in your progress and your development? If you are advising a startup photographer, how are you going to tell them and get them ready for the things that they are not ready for? Because they think there's an overnight thing. A lot of photographers think it's an mm-hmm. overnight process that you just sit down, get someone to teach you, watch YouTube videos, and you are going to be able to replicate exactly what they are doing. And it's very, very far from that. So what would be your advice to someone starting out in retouching? What are the things that you tell them that they should expect so that they don't get caught by surprise? Okay. <laughs> Considering your process and how much you've developed. Uh, okay, so you started with tools, right? So, yeah. So the things that you've used okay, over the years, so, softwares and all of that. Mm. Okay, I think we all have our preferences. Yes. I use Capture One. Okay. Uh, I use Capture One because of... Uh, few things i mean yes i use capture and i use photoshop and then say my advice on uh, say upcoming retouches uh, i mean i feel it depends on your feel and i also feel uh, some uh, retouches some people don't even retouch their photos but they mm-hmm. look good, they yes, look good yeah. with the lighting yes so it all depends on your preference how you want to take it how far you want to take it yes. yeah but if you want to retouch and retouch good yes you have to learn yeah. Obviously, yeah, you, you have do. to learn. You have to spend like lots of time. A lot of time. In front of the PC, learn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think, uh, yeah. And retouching is something that I think a lot of photographers think that that's always the remedy to getting right photos. But it actually starts from the image from the yes, camera itself. Yes, 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 yes. Because if you're able to capture, just like you said, some people don't even retouch their images at all, but they still but look they are light decently and good. Sure. And that's because they understand how light works the camera, the lenses that they're using, they understand every bit and, I mean, I mean every nook and cranny about the process, they understand it. Yeah, so that when I, they capture it, they don't think about, oh, I'm going to resolve this, in, I mean, during editing or whatever. They get everything right, set everything right before they capture. True, yes. True. And, that's, and that's, I think, how it's supposed to be in the minds of everyone who wants true, to do photography. True. And then I also want to chip this in. Okay. Uh, I feel uh, a photo... It's a photo without even being retouched. I don't know if you get what yeah. I'm trying to say. Yeah. It depends on how far you want to take it. The idea, like even what you had in mind before shooting. Yes. You can shoot without retouching. It would still be it's a photo. Still, yeah, a photo, yes. yeah. Mm-hmm. If you want to retouch, fine. As I said, like it depends on how far you want to take it. How you want the image to, to come out. out. Yes. 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 So sometimes I can even shoot and then not edit because mm-hmm. I feel, yes, this is what It's fine as it is. Do you get me? Yes. So, yes, sometimes I even shoot grayscale, all that. It mm. depends on how far... And how, the, how the, look, the look, the yes. predetermined look that yes, you want. Yes, 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 the look. Yeah. Yes. And, and I think in addition, I'll add this to this, what you just said. Mm-hmm. That photographs, any outcome of a photograph isn't a mistake unless you didn't intend that outcome. Yes. That's when it becomes a mistake because True. there are a couple of times that I showed pictures to clients. Mm-hmm. I sent them the artwork mm-hmm. and those that I thought wasn't the best, rather the were the best select. to them. Yes, true, true. <laughs> they really rather vouched for those ones instead of true. what I was, I mean, um, recommending that they used. True. So it's always about your client and not always about what you, you think. So true. when you uh, capture an image, always think about 
what you want it to be like and if you're able to capture it and, and it turns out awesome. to be like that or even better then that's good and if your client also in the long run likes it the matter is settled sure and that's how it has to be looked at will you describe photography as a good commodity is this something that is worth looking into to make ends meet and make a living out of oh sure definitely yeah Okay, so what would you say to someone wanting to start photography who has that intention of making money? I believe it's a good source of income because obviously I wouldn't be here. I mean, look, looking at uh, the the prices on or the pricing of our uh, equipment. Yeah. See how much it costs and all. Like, yeah. I think it so if you were, were not making a decent amount yes, of income, yes, you wouldn't yes. be able to purchase Definitely. those ones. Yes, of course, Definitely. of course, of Definitely. course. Definitely. So um, I mean, it's quite it's quite rampant having people come to you ask. How much is this costing and why would you get this over that and all that? You see, it's a plethora of questioning. If you are telling someone that photography is worth looking into, mm -hmm. convincing them, what are the challenges that you also attach to it? Because, of course, you don't expect them to think that photography is that easy. Because if you are at this stage and you are making whatever amount of money, mm -hmm. definitely in the past you are not making as much okay. as you are making right now. So... Okay. To throw everything out of their heads to make them think that photography is easy, what would you tell them are the challenges that they should look forward to? Okay, first of all, <laughs> I wouldn't say it's easy. Yes. I feel it takes determination and effort. A lot of work. Yes. Mm -hmm. You need to sit down and learn. Like, spend, as I was saying earlier, spend yeah. more time on the PC, learn. So, obviously, if you really want to make it, obviously, you need to get connects. Yeah. Because I feel it's a major part. Yeah. You need to learn. Learn, learn, yes, learn most Hold of the on. time, and then yeah, create good content. So I feel if you start creating creating good content, and then I also uh, have a platform where you'll be posting you your want content to show it to people. Yes, yeah, and then yeah. get a good platform as well where people get to uh, look at photos. Obviously, so what what, what, what platforms would you recommend? I'd say Instagram, Facebook too as well. Okay, Behance. Yes. All right, all right. Yeah, so yeah. I think when you start posting there, people people would tend to see your work and, yeah. and I think and your work in general does the talking for you in yes, the yes, 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 yes. So, so you start I wouldn't say it wouldn't be easy mm -hmm. obviously it wasn't of easy course. for me so I mean with time I think it will work out it will work out it will yeah. work out definitely so talking about clients acquisition of clients your clientele I'm sure of course now your work does the talking for you most of the time and people reach out to you and all that um, how difficult or how easy <laughs> was it Getting I mean, clients. getting clients. Hey. It's always a tough process. Yes, I mean. <laughs> because after getting is. your your first camera, your lens, that's what follows. Yes. Because you have to make up for what you spent. True, true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, obviously, it's not easy. I mean, to even convince someone, especially, say, say a brand who already has a photographer, mm -hmm. to convince them to use you, I mean, it's not easy. Obviously, you have to get good content. content. How I get them, I mean, I mean like, we... If you have good images, obviously yeah. it speaks. But sometimes I feel you also have to uh, get up and then go look for clients. Yes, yes, yes. Because most of the time, I always say this to my people. Most of the time, most most clients don't even go like yeah, even see your work. Some of, some of them are not yeah social media kind I mean, of oriented. People. Yes, mm, yes, yes. Mm, so true. obviously, see big brands and you have to maybe, go to them. yes, you have yeah, and then. Even with them, you have to go to their agencies. Yeah. So you need to find agencies to work with, yes, and then convince them because obviously they would. They, I'm sure they might have people doing uh, what you photography want to for them already. So yes. how how you pitch your yes, brand with them is going to determine true, if you get true, it or not. True. Yeah. So it takes that and then convincing people. I mean, and then also good content. So I yes. think with that, yes. Yeah. So it means it doesn't end there, not just with the talent, but also yes. the business sense of it. Yes. You have to go the extra mile of reaching out to them. Because one day, I think I was, I was um, having the interest of shooting interior, landscape, kind of, you know, for companies like, let's say, hotel premises and mm -hmm. all that. I watched one video on YouTube, and the whole thing that the YouTubers spoke about was that you need to reach out to them. You don't wait for them to come look at your work. Yes. <laughs> Chances that they wouldn't see you. Most I mean, it's very hard because online. you're not the only one doing photography. Sure, I sure. mean, so you have to reach out to them. So let's say if you have 50 prospects, you reach out to 50 companies, 50 brands, 
50 hotels for that matter. Some will bounce you early. Definitely, you're going to get a few number of them written back to you. True. So you go to them after that phone call, present your work to the HR or whoever is responsible for taking in you know, such um, admissions, send it to them, then they look at it and definitely you're going to get a call here and there. So mm -hmm. the more you reach, the higher your chances of getting True. someone reaching back to you. So True. you don't have to sit down. And sure. post it on just social media to think that it's a And then I want to also say that sometimes to, I think it also depends on, say, the number of works you have. And then, oh, sorry, say uh, the, the, the kind number of, of people and the, the kind brands of people you've, you've worked with. Associated so with. I feel, okay, let's say you've worked with so so and so person. Yeah. I think that person can recommend you. To so I feel the next. recommendation to respect. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then Fair I think else. it all boils down to the kind of, and then say the end product too matters. Matters. So not just fishing in for clients. But so your work should also yes, be good. The final, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, the yes. So doing a good job also uh, gets you a recommendation. Exactly, exactly. So they actually work hand in hand. One supersedes over the other at a point, sure. and the other on the another. And point. I think most, yeah. most, most of our uh, works. I think most gigs that we get is usually from recommendations. Yeah. Yes, I think. I th yes. Yeah, most of the time. Most of the time. Yes. Because people speak about your work to other people. Just like sure. your work itself is going so to do the talking get, for you. Like if, you <laughs> if you produce bad images or say deliver bad images to clients all the time, you should expect that they don't obviously. speak they about no, you at all. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Or recommend or refer yes. you to them. No. You're no, always going to happens. get bad feedback <laughs> all the time. Exactly. So yeah, producing good work also, I mean, most importantly, I mean, um, resides on this. Okay, so basically we've spoken about a lot and we are very thankful for allowing us to come in to talk to you about things that you basically must have not spoken to people about. You've, you've taken us back into your life, the history about how you started photography and all that. Yeah. So how do we find you on social media as well as wherever? And where is your studio based, first of all? Okay, so I have a studio in Kumasi, that's okay. where we are now, and then one in Accra at North Lagos. Okay, yes. that's great. That's great. So, where do we find you on social media as well? Uh, if someone wants to reach okay. out to you, okay, I'm on Instagram. Uh, it's Black Eye Photography, and then White Memories for my wedding page. Okay. Yes, I shoot weddings as well. Right. And then on uh, Facebook, I'm Black Eye GH, and then okay. behind some my name, Anthony. I'm all right, all right. That's wonderful. So that's where you can find Anthony's work, all the wonderful and remarkable works that. I'm actually talking about that you've seen some also over here on this particular video. Um, if you want to go check out for yourself and see the rest and all the goodies that he has for you, go check them out on the said um, platforms that he just mentioned. And uh, yeah, have a good view. <laughs> all right. So bringing everything to a close. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What would be the ultimate advice you give to fellow photographers? Even those already in the business as well as okay. those who are wanting to get their foot out the door. Uh, my advice would be uh, to learn most of the time, watch YouTube videos, which I retouch most of the time, because I feel uh, editing, uh, with more editing comes experience. Yeah. experience yes. Yeah. So the more you edit, the more you have you experience. Get better. Yes. So learn most of the time. Yeah. Yeah. And then learn the business aspect to us. Well. Very yes. important. Yes. Because yeah. buying all these equipment and you can't make up for them yeah, <laughs> in should. terms of yes. returns, yes. Yeah, yes. it's going to be a nightmare. how to deal with clients and all that. Yeah, yes. we should also look into that. Yes. Yeah. And I think a lot of content on YouTube actually focus on such topics. So, True. yeah, you have a lot of content where you can look into True. and uh, educate yourself. Yeah, Because being self-taught also helps so that you don't always have to rely on other people. And if they don't have time for you, it becomes a problem. No. On your own, you can also equally learn a whole lot. Sure. So thank you very much once again, Anthony, Black Eye Photography, yes. for allowing us to interview you to talk about your life and all that. It's and that is how we do it on Creative Chat. I've been your host, Kobe Shots, And until the next video, I'm going to catch you later. Have a wonderful day. See ya.